anybody who thinks that Chinese just copy or steal technology from the West definitely do not know about Jack Ma. Jack Ma is part Bill Gates, part Steve Jobs and part Mark Zuckerberg all rolled in one. In just a decade and a half, Jack Ma, a man from humble beginnings who started out as an English teacher, founded Alibaba and built it into one of the world's largest companies on which hundreds of millions of Chinese depend on. This is the better investor helping you achieve your financial goals and freedom through organizing your finance, stock market investing and learning from billionaires. And these are top 5 lessons from the book Alibaba the house that Jack Ma built written by Duncan Clark. Lesson number 1 the iron triangle Alibaba the e-commerce giant that we know today became successful because of various factors other than its founder Jack Ma which is most obvious it identified the competitive edge in three innovative special spaces the e-commerce edge the logistics edge and the financial edge this completes the iron triangle the e-commerce edge unlike amazon the alibaba's consumer websites which are taobao and tmall carry no inventory they just and just serve as platforms for other merchants to sell their wares taobao consists of 9 million storefronts run by small traders or individuals alibaba charges them no fees so how does taobao earn money because of the huge traffic that comes on the website so they sell advertisement space which amazon only recently started helping promote those merchants who want to stand out from the crowd tmall if taobao can be compared to your local scrappy market stall then tmall is a fancy glitzy shopping mall large retailers and even luxury brands sell their goods on tmall and for those customers not yet able to afford them they build brand awareness unlike taobao which is free for buyers and sellers merchants pay commission to tmall today tmall is one of the top 7 most visited websites in china tmall hosts a to z of all the brands starting from apple to zara you would be surprised to know that not only giant us retailers like costco and macy's are on tmall but even amazon is on tmall selling imported food shoes toys and kitchenware since 2015 groceries are another popular category the supermarkets in china were terrible and alibaba at very early stage learned this fact and exploited it so much that already more than 40% of chinese consumers buy their groceries online as compared to just 10% in united states you would be surprised to know that alibaba even sells automobiles online general motors brand chevrolet and buick both operate on tmall the super rich can even browse lists of entire islands for sale in canada fiji or greece the logistics edge without the low cost delivery that the courier services provide alibaba would not be the giant that it is today but surprisingly none of these couriers are employed by alibaba itself most of the packages in china are delivered by private couriers in 2005 jack ma approached the state owned china post proposing to work together on e-commerce but jack was laughed at by the officials and were told to mind his own business at the same time china's private courier companies saw the opportunity of the e-commerce gold rush starting the rest was history china's courier market exploded all thanks to alibaba these courier services provided very low cost express deliveries Alibaba indirectly gave birth to more than 8000 courier companies in China. More than 2/3 of the revenue of these companies come from Alibaba. 
as these courier services provide innovative express and low cost deliveries like a boomerang or karma the sales of alibaba also zoomed up with the advent of artificial intelligence now alibaba has invested in various smart logistics firm to harness the power of data technology and make logistics way more efficient in such a populous country the financial edge in financial services alibaba's most important asset play is alipay it's the answer to paypal it is by far the most popular online payment tool in china alipay single handedly handles more than 3 quarters of a trillion dollars a year in online transactions which is 3 times the volume of paypal and 1/3 of entire global online payments market Just like Alibaba exploited the inefficiencies of offline retail, it also exploited the inefficiencies of offline banking. Even before any bank in China started with online banking, Alibaba with its Alipay was already carrying out transactions online. Not only the people in China use Alipay today as a mode of transaction, people even save their money in their online wallets. Alipay also accepts deposits offering way more interest than the contemporary banks in China making it favorite of the general population Alibaba even has its own mutual fund which was launched in 2013 which stirred China's stagnant financial industry into a complete frenzy Lesson number 2 The humble beginnings Most companies bears the imprint of their founders but not anyone more than Alibaba it was his charisma that bound together the people and capital into a solid single foundation Jack's mother worked on a factory production line his father is a photographer Jack was born in Huangzhou at a time when private enterprises in China had almost been completely decimated but when Jack was 2 Mao was back in power and he subjected China to the portals of cultural revolution. With more people from west visited China, Jack fell in love with the English literature. In late 1978, China came up with open door policy, opening its gates for the foreign investors. After a decade of turmoil, China was on the verge of bankruptcy and desperately needed capital. As more people from west visited his city, Jack never missed the chance to polish his English speaking skills with them. Among many others who came to his city in 1980 was an Australian family, the Morleys. Mr. Ken Morley along with his family had signed up for a local tour of China. For his kids and family, it would be their first overseas trip. But for little Jack, their visit would change his life. Morley kids became friends with Jack accidentally in the park. This led to Jack meeting Mr. Ken Morley, who was immensely impressed by the little Jack and showed enormous interest later in helping Jack financially with his career and studies. Good speaking skills of Jack were of little to no use for one of the Jack's earliest enemies, the mathematics. In China all high school students hoping to go on higher education had to pass a merit based higher education test in which mathematics chinese and a foreign language was mandatory Jack took the exam and failed badly the first time he took test scoring just 1 out of 120 in maths He appeared for it the next time without losing hopes and preparing hard this time though his scores improved slightly to 19 out of 120 it was still short needed for the selection during those days he sent out 11 job applications but all were faced with rejection even the kfc turned him away the only one out of 24 candidates finally in 1984 when he was 19 he raised his math score to get an admission into local university scoring 89 out of 120 this time barely making it due to better scores in other subjects next year in 1985 he received an invitation from mr morley 
to come to Australia and visit their family. Jack went there. His friendship with the Morleys blossomed. Back in China during university days when money concerns were pressing, the Morleys again came for the rescue for young Jack. Few years later, Jack got married and again the Morleys helped Jack and gave the couple 22,000 Australian dollars to help finance the couple's first home. After graduating in 1988 with bachelor's degree in English, Jack became a lecturer in English, but he had started to think of a career beyond teaching. After his day job at the institute, he would take English classes at YMCA as a side hustle to make ends meet. His classes gained immense popularity among colleges in the city, and the students would come all the way to take lessons from him. But Jack's teaching career soon came to an end, and he resolved to launch his own business before turning 30. Working part-time on his new business after classes, he named his first company Hope. Lesson number three: Jack, the entrepreneur. In January 1994, at the age of 29, Jack founded the translation agency named Hope. When the company first started there were just 5 employees who were his retired teacher friends Jack asked the students to help them distributing banners as a marketing strategy in the colleges His hope translation agency was successfully running but it was becoming clear to Jack that translation services alone were not going to satiate his entrepreneurial ambitions With his reputation as an English speaking expert He was asked by the state to visit a logistics company to assist an interpreter in helping resolve a dispute with an American company over the construction of a new highway. The dispute did not materialize in China and Jack was asked by the government to go to United States to settle the dispute. The visit to America was going to change the perspective of his career forever. On his trip to America, Jack for the very first time came to see what internet was. He was told by his colleague in America, "Jack, this is internet and you can search whatever you want." Coincidentally, Jack searched beer. He saw results of all kind of beer, American beer, German beer, but no China beer. His curiosity made him search the word China and the search showed no results. The data on the internet was limited and there was literally no information about China present on the internet. On his trip, Jack set up a website for his Chinese Hope Translation Agency giving out the contact number and address. In less than 3 hours of launching the website, Jack got five emails inquiring about his translation services he was shocked to see that when jack returned back he got along with him a computer running intel 486 processor it was most advanced in china at that time he then set about building concept of online web page which he named as china pages when he dived into his second venture he was ready to charge on leaving his teaching days far behind concept of china pages was to provide information for chinese businesses for the world to know more like a advertisement to fund his startup jack borrowed money from his relatives and his wife kathy was the first employee though they were slowly getting customers but by this time they badly needed clients There were already expensive costs of domain and website hosting plus Jack had left his job too all that he and his wife had was china pages due to the lack of telecom services it was becoming almost impossible for Jack to make local businesses understand the power of internet and the business china pages finally in 1995 state telecom started to provide internet connection and luckily Jack was able to load a website in front of his first client on the computer that he got from US. It took 3 and 1/2 hours to download the front page. Slowly the telecom infrastructure in China picked up and it started the era of country's first technology entrepreneurs. 
Almost all of these were US educated engineers. By 1995, the internet build out in the country gained momentum. Jack was now able to host site directly from China, which helped China pages cut costs. But boosting revenues was proving hard. China Pages was asked by various businesses and state organizations to build their own website. This made Jack's China Pages publicly famous. However, still, China Pages was running out of cash to run its business and pay its employees. The situation led Jack to sell a controlling and big stake of China Pages to a state-owned telecom enterprise. With this, Jack lost control of his pioneering venture. In 1997, Jack announced that he was giving up all his stakes in China Pages and moving to Beijing. Jack's statement that the internet would change the world was right. His problem was that he has launched his venture too soon. Jack then put his dreams on hold, taking a job in an economic corporation in Beijing. Lesson number four. In every crisis, there is an opportunity. Third time lucky with his struggles with Hope Translation and China Pages and an uncomfortable period working for government in Beijing, Jack went on to find Alibaba at the beginning of 1999. When Jack started building on his ideas of Alibaba, the competition was becoming cutthroat. The China had no capital. Instead, all the funding was coming in from America. Many firms had big fundings from VCs. A total of 18 regular common people came together, mostly all employees as shareholders to raise capital for Alibaba initially, with Jack and his wife Kathy being the largest of all. With their feet on the floor and high hopes, they toiled out 16 hours a day, 7 days a week to work on Alibaba. There were many other e-commerce platforms starting like Alibaba, most of them copying the concepts from America. But Jack's Alibaba was unique. To get the initial customer base, getting onto Alibaba was kept free for merchants. The other competitors charged significant commission from the merchants of portion of the sales unlike Alibaba. This significant differentiation attracted huge vendors and merchants towards Alibaba. Though giving things free was a nice tool in short run to gain that initial advantage and customer base. However, it was not sustainable for long term. Alibaba needed more capital. Goldman Sachs then came and invested $5 million for half of the stake in the company. That kept the operations running. However, Jack knew that if he really had to decimate his competitors, he would need more capital. Jack's charisma and his mindset attracted famous Japanese SoftBank who were known for making fortune after investing in Yahoo in 1996. In 1999, SoftBank invested $20 million for 30% stake of the company. The SoftBank's investment provided Jack with serious street value and credentials. In 1999, Trillions of dollars were pouring in to fund the internet companies. Jack knew that in order for Alibaba to stand out, he needed a polished tech person. So he hired John, an executive of Yahoo who had immense contribution in making Yahoo a great search engine then, was asked to work for Alibaba at half the salary by Jack. John had already worked with Jack once he was running China Pages. To everyone's surprise, John jumped from Yahoo to Alibaba, disregarding the cut he had to take in the salary. With fresh capital, new recruits and more than 150,000 members in 188 countries signed up on website. Things were looking great for Alibaba, but then the tech bubble popped. From its peak in March 2000, the Nasdaq index began a two-year losing streak, wiping out trillions of dollars of market capitalization and taking down many technology firms with it. Stock price of Amazon went down from $107 to less than $10, wiping out almost 90% of its market cap. Big giants like Yahoo and Microsoft were no different. The Chinese tech companies who were listed on Nasdaq lost their value 
and new investors and VCs were now skeptical in funding these Chinese companies. This proved out to be a bane for Alibaba. In next three months, more than 60% of internet companies in China had closed the doors. Alibaba still being private and having large pile of cash in reserve increased its hiring and advertising activities. Jack became talk at every TV show. Even after dot-com crash, people would fly all the way to Hong Kong to listen to Jack. But another company named EachNet was being acquired by eBay. And they started stepping up the game in consumer e-commerce, unlike Alibaba, which was only limited to business-to-business -business e-commerce. In 2002, to fight with eBay, Jack thought of launching its consumer e-commerce website. But the B2B business was yet not so profitable and fundings were dry. This time again, SoftBank came as a safe harbor. Masa Haisi Son, the head of SoftBank, invested $80 million this time for Jack's new consumer-based e-commerce platform. However, this project was kept highly confidential. In May 2003, Alibaba finally launched its consumer e-commerce platform and named it Taobao and rest is history. In February 2004, SoftBank once again invested $82 million to replenish the bucket of cash for Alibaba in preparation of Taobao's long battle with eBay. This transaction was also the end of road for the Goldman Sachs. Goldman sold all of its stake. The initial investment made by Goldman was around $3.3 million. And just within five years, they cashed out whooping $24 million, more than seven times their initial investment in just a matter of five years. Lesson number five, the game of patience. After a significant failure of Yahoo to set its footprints in China and years of frustration, Jerry Yang, the founder of Yahoo, made a bold decision and in 2005 handed Jack $1 billion and the keys to Yahoo China's business in exchange for 40% stake in Alibaba. This gave more ammunition to Jack to completely destroy the business of eBay, scale up Taobao and build Alipay. Jack invested heavily in Yahoo China brand with more than $4 million in just TV advertisements to promote search. But the core area of search for Yahoo could not keep up with Google and Baidu, with Yahoo commanding 21% of market share in search in 2005, its market share fell down to less than 6% in 2009. When eBay exited China in 2006, Taobao users were 30 million. Within 3 years, they were 170 million and the sales had grown from $2 billion to $30 billion. Still, Taobao was a loss-making company due to giving free listing space to merchants. In 2007, Jack listed the initial offering of its B2B business of Alibaba on Hong Kong exchange. The IPO was subscribed by whooping 257 times by the retailers. Only those lucky enough saw their investment triple on the listing day from $13 to $39, giving Alibaba's B2B business a valuation of $26 billion, a multiple of 300 times its earnings. After the listing, the former Alibaba CEO said that he got a valuable insight from Jack. Raise money when you don't need it. When you need it, don't go out to raise money. It's too late. Jack used the money to feed Taobao. Taobao selling advertisement space to the merchants. Jack used the money to feed Taobao. Taobao started selling advertisement space to the merchants for their brand to stand out on Taobao's website. Finally, Taobao started generating meaningful revenues and outshining the B2B business. You may think it was a wonderful decision when I told that the Goldman Sachs made seven times the initial investment when they sold their stake in 2004. But then happened the historical listing of Alibaba on New York Stock Exchange in 2014, with Alibaba selling 16% of stake for $25 billion 
द बिगेस्ट इन द हिस्ट्री गोल्डमेन सैक्स थ्री डेसिमल थ्री मिलियन डॉलर इन 1999 इन अलीबाबा वुड हैव बीन वर्थ मोर देन ट्वेल्व डेसिमल फाइव बिलियन डॉलर अ होपिंग रिटर्न ऑफ मोर देन थर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड टाइम्स फ्रॉम इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट वैल्यू विद इन अ मैटर ऑफ फिफ्टीन ईयर्स वॉट सीम्स गुड कैन बी वे बेटर इफ यू हैव सम पेशेंस लेट्स हैव अ क्विक रीकैप For a business to succeed it needs to capitalize on few factors look out for inefficiencies around them and exploit them no matter what your financial goal is you have to start from humble beginnings until and unless you are a member of an already wealthy family but having humble beginnings is no excuse for anyone to dream small On the entrepreneur journey most of the times you will not succeed the very first time so be prepared to fail but also be prepared to get up and start again in every crisis there is an opportunity when the times are good you must prepare for the bad times only then would you be able to take the advantage of a crisis just like jack did with alibaba after dot com bubble burst when things are going good we may get greedy but at those times we must think of the long term perspective and as charlie munger says delay gratification if goldman sachs had patience they would have minted 35 times the money of their initial investment but because of not being able to delay gratification they exited long before the party was just getting started that's it guys If you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe I will come again with lessons of another book related to stock market investing or personal finance soon This is the better investors until then cheers guys